What's going on guys, welcome back to F1 2021 for my team career mode, season two, round number 11, the Dutch Grand Prix at Zanvoort. Now to start, we have a couple of um, kind of sponsor renewals to do and I actually decided to get rid of the Shark sponsor and we changed to Slingshot Fuel. We are gonna re-sign with PSD though. I reckon that's gonna be the way to go. We have a durability upgrade come through. We're gonna put another one on the car. I believe that's MGUH or MGUK number three. So we're really trying to maximize our durability now because that's definitely what we are lacking with. And we have a retirement, our first retirement of this whole career mode series. Kimi Raikkonen will be retiring at the end of this season. So there is finally gonna be a retirement. We didn't have any retirements last season. So it's good to have a retirement at the end of this season. And looking at R&D, once again, we're just jockeying positions with Mercedes. I think they're just ahead once again for this race, but a lot of the other teams have course up, so it's a very, very close group at the top and in that kind of midfield area. This is the setup that I would be going for. I actually slightly changed my setup, did a few practice runs in the practice sessions with another setup and didn't really find the pace that I was hoping for, so I changed the setup up a bit. But as you will find out, my pace is still not here. You may remember if you watched the Dutch Grand Prix for last season, I did not have good pace here. It was, I believe, the first race where my teammate at the time, Christian Lungard, absolutely destroyed me in qualifying. And this time, that's definitely the case even more so. Of course, we have Fernando Alonso as our teammate, and we are effectively in the second fastest car at the moment. And I didn't manage to get out of Q1. Yes. This corner here especially is where I lose all my time. It's just, that corner is so bloody difficult. And then this whole run down here, I get way too over the curbs here. I mean, even this was not a great run compared to what I can do. But even on my best possible run, I'd be lucky to get through to Q2 on this track. So it's just, this track is really difficult. It's actually a track that I do quite like. I quite enjoy this track, but honestly, with the AI, the AI are just way too good at this track that I really cannot find any time. I mean, we're literally in the second quickest car in this career mode. I mean, yes, all the cars, like the top 10, I mean, the, not 10, the top eight teams really, are really close to each other on R&D. It's only Williams and Haas are a fair way behind. Everybody else is fairly close together. Um, but yeah, Fernando Alonso goes second fastest. We go P20. So we are way... We're nowhere near making it out of Q1. My pace here is absolutely dreadful. Um, I actually gave it another day to do the race because I was a little bit annoyed after doing this race, how after doing this qualifying. But what I am doing, I'm going to put a bunch of new components on the car. We're going to have to take some engine penalties later on in the season anyway. So I'm going to do a bunch here. We're going to start from the back, but I'm pretty much at the back anyway. So let's see what we can do. For years, the passionate Dutch fans have been easy to find trackside at races across Europe and throughout the world. Now at long last, they have a Grand Prix to call their own. It's a warm welcome once again to all of our viewers in the Netherlands and around the globe as we get underway for the Dutch Grand Prix. Zandvoort circuit, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout a 2.6 mile lap. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Fernando Alonso, Antonio Giovinazzi and Leclerc, Sainz, Ricardo, Norris and Pierre Gasly, Sonoda, Vettel, Esteban Ocon and Stroll, Russell, Lundgaard, Kimi Raikkonen, and Mick Schumacher, Latifi, Mazepin, Bottas, they've taken a grid penalty, and Shaw. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Okay, so here we go for to five red lights for the Dutch Grand Prix, starting from the very back of the grid. I decided to take four different new engine components because well, I didn't want to do every single one because I thought that would be a bit cheaty, but if I'm going to be starting right at the back anyway, let's just get some of these components out of the way and see how we can do. So we start off here. We don't have a great start, to be honest. We have a little look around the outside of Mazepin through turn one, but can't quite do anything. And now he's attacking Bottas, who is 
quite considerably the faster Williams driver, but has also taken a grid penalty to be starting alongside us on the back row. As you can see here, we're just kind of hanging back at the moment. This is not a good track to have been starting right at the back of the grid because it is one of the most difficult tracks on the calendar to overtake. It's honestly up there with Monaco and Hungary as the hardest tracks to overtake on. And like I said, my pace here isn't that great. Although in races, I seem to have a little bit better race pace than I do qualifying pace. So hopefully we can at least somewhat make our way through the grid or else it's gonna be a very boring race. We're right at the back of Bottas here. We're actually gonna have a look up the inside, but we get very caught out by Mazepin. We jump over the curb. We don't get a penalty though. So I somewhat let Mazepin go, but I'm going to stay in front of Bottas. That's perhaps a little bit cheesy, but we don't get a penalty. Now, I don't have corner cutting on strict, but I do have it on standard, and that doesn't give us a penalty. So whatever, I'm just going to go with it. Um, perhaps a little bit cheesy there by me, as we're now looking at a move on Mazepin. I mean, down the straights, we are so much quicker than these guys in this first sector is pretty decent for me. I'm fairly good around this first sector as we go too wide through kind of turn two slash three. I don't know how you want to call that corner. I guess it's turn two really. And we just about managed to get past Mazepin. He's actually on a set of soft tires. As we watch the start again from Fernando Alonso, he starts P4 on the grid, gets a great start and puts himself up into P2 for turn one. He's side by side with, I believe, Sergio Perez there as it's Max Verstappen up ahead. But he's got the position on the Mexican and Fernando Alonso, my teammate, is into P2. So we are way off the pace here. But Alonso is right at the sharp end, so hopefully with us not having a good race here, I mean, even if we do make our way through the field, we're going to potentially be low points. But if Alonso can get like a podium, that would be amazing. As on to lap three, we're now looking, sizing up a move on Nicholas Latifi. We're going to dance to the outside. He's just about in front of us at the moment, but we can hold it quite well around the outside there. And through turn two, this little chicane here, we just about managed to get through. I'm very, very good at this first part of the lap. It's once, I mean, even up this straight bit here, we're fine. It's when you get to that very fast right-hander that the time is all lost for me. It's just literally like half a second to almost a second of lost time there. We're now making a move on, I believe, Kimi Raikkonen. He's retiring at the end of the season, as we now know, but I just about managed to make the move on him round the outside of Turn 1. That gets us up into, I believe, P... Uh, P18 at the moment and now we've got George Russell in the other Alfa Romeo in front of us we get very very close behind him coming into this corner this is the corner here where I make so where I lose so much time it's just it's such a quick corner you have to be so brave and you have to get it pinpoint accurate and that's the problem the AI can pretty much get it pinpoint accurate every single time I have a couple of laps where I get it pretty damn good but you have to be so accurate and so brave that I just can't make the time on the AI. They're just way too quick. But luckily, I've got plenty of ERS to use. I've got DRS, and I'm looking at a move on Russell, but he's looking at a move on Mick Schumacher, who is ahead of him. Had a great start. He's on the soft tyres, though. So, um, you know, perhaps those tyres will be wearing off pretty soon. Russell gets around the outside of him, and I'm going to go on for the move on Schumacher as well, as we both get through past the German driver, and I am now up into P17, but we've still got Russell to get past, and he's definitely proving to be my toughest opponent so far, as he managed to get past Schumacher very easily and quickly there, but now he's got no DRS in front. We do. We're going for a move once again around the outside as he goes quite defensive, and we're there through turn one. He has a little bit of a look to try and fight back, but a little bit of a wobble out of turn one means that he can't quite do anything, and we're now up into P16, so we're making decent progress here. Like I said, our race pace is far better than qualifying pace, just so much better. Um, I seem to find this in the F1 games. The AI are a lot stronger in qualifying than they are in race pace. On F1 2020, you could change the AI's difficulty between quali and the race. So I'd usually run quali on a slightly lower uh, AI setting and then put it up by one or two for the race. Now, the AI don't seem quite that different between quali and race in this game compared to they were in the last game but in this game you can't change the ai difficulty as soon as you go into a practice session you cannot change that difficulty for the whole event you know you can only change it once you go to the next round so um 
yeah, something that you just something to consider in this game as we are now trying to get up to Stroll who is kind of at the back well I mean he's got a little bit of a of a, a margin here but you can see ahead of them a few people just coming out of the pits there they are some of the top drivers as we change our strategy uh, to a I think just one extra do one extra lap on these tires before changing um, yeah there's a lot of cars up ahead but that's because some of them have come into the pits already for their first stop so this is actually a pretty long train here. Stroll is at the back of it. We're catching up to the back of him though. He's kind of the last hard tire runner at the moment. He's got Christian Lungard with the medium tires up ahead of him. Now we've got the DRS on Stroll, but it's not gonna be that easy to catch up because he's got DRS on Lungard up ahead of him. So it's gonna start to get a little bit of a DRS train. And I believe yeah, I mean, the cars up ahead of them are getting away a little bit because they're on quicker tyres and everything. But then there's a caution up ahead. Something's gone on here. We've got Gasly on the left there, pulled up to the side. And Lando Norris is also out of the session. He's pulled up just up the road up here. There he is, Lando Norris out of the session. There's been a bit of an issue here as we watch on with Lando Norris here. He's kind of at the back of this big train with Gasly behind him and he's gone pretty well at the moment um let's say that but he's obviously in a bit of a drs train with all these cars but he has a bit of an engine failure around that corner gasly just catches him unaware goes straight into the back and that is a bad bad crash for gasly i think norris was retiring anyway because of an engine failure but um it kind of caught him out right at the, at the worst time look it goes right there and just doesn't quite have gasly doesn't quite have enough time to react and norris also comes onto the track a little bit unsafely that's gasly and norris both out of the session safety car is out so i'm actually going to come in for my pit stop i was originally going to be going quite long on the hard tires and then coming in for soft tires right at the end it's way too early to come on the sauce now but i want to stick with a one stop so we're going to come on to a set of mediums, and these should fairly easily go to the end of the race. I mean, we're going to be going slightly longer on the mediums, or about the same time actually on the mediums than we did on the hards, but um, we've got a couple of laps under the safety car, so it shouldn't really matter. We should get these tyres all the way to the end, as it's green light racing after the safety car stroll, very, very defensive on the right there, and the big, big train there means that me and Stroll can both dive up the inside of the Alpines. I managed to get past, I think that is Ocon, and Lungard is just ahead of me as Stroll manages to get past him. It might be the other way around, actually. I think we might have got past Lungard, and that's now, um, that's now Ocon in front of me as now it's all one by one single file through here we're just trying to follow these cars through but once again through this part here we are not very quick i mean it doesn't look too bad with all the cars around me here but we're definitely not quick through that sector it's just really not good but out of here is where we can start to make a little bit of time as we're now right on the back of esteban ocon in the alpine we want to make our way through i mean he's on the hard tires now i don't know if he's come in at all but um, he's on hard, I think he might have started on softs and is now on hards perhaps to the end of the race. So we're on the medium tyres, fresh medium tyres, we want to be trying to make our way past Ocon. But it's proving a little bit difficult and to be honest we have a little bit of pressure from George Russell behind. He's now on the medium tyres as well and yeah it's showing some decent pace here. But now we're looking for a move on Ocon, we make him go defensive into turn 1, he's on the inside, we're going to go round the outside of turn one it's really the only overtaking opportunity on this track and we don't quite get it done we're still side by side going through turn two turn three chicane but once again we can just hang that round a little bit longer break a bit later and get the position stuck and now we're back with stroll up ahead of us he's one of the main guys we're racing here and he's got bottas ahead of him but i'm making stroll go very defensive once again into turn one we're looking at the outside we're a little bit boxed in by Bottas up ahead but that doesn't really phase us we're going to go around the outside of Stroll we're still side by side going through here though it's a very good battle but once again we can just get the run out of that corner and be good and then we've got the slipstream from Bottas to try and get the move on him and sure enough the next lap round we're going to do the exact same thing make him go 
up the, uh, make him take the tighter line. I think he actually locked up a little bit into turn one, and we've actually got the move done before turn two. So there we go. That is that move done. Now it's Kimi Raikkonen once again back in front of us. Don't think he's come in for a pit stop yet. So um, starting on the hard tyres. So he's still committing to that hard to soft tyres by the looks of it. As we get very, very close up the back of Raikkonen, we've actually gone purple in the first sector. So... You know, that shows we do have pretty decent pace in this first sector. It's just this second sector where we really struggle. And now, though, we're going to try and make the move. We have a DRS on Raikkonen. He has nothing. And we just absolutely blitz past him into turn one. He doesn't even really put up a fight because there's no real reason. We had that done way in advance. And we're up into P11. So we're one away from points now. However, it's Yuki Tsunoda ahead of us on the soft tyres. Um, as Christian Lungard is now out of the session, he is going to DNF from a mechanical failure as we just have a little look on here. His engine cuts out right about this point here and he's just coasting it around this final corner trying to find a place to park up. We get a couple of puffs of smoke from the engine and then a little bit more. It's just, it's not one of those constant streams of smoke, but it's just splutters of smoke from the engine. But there we go. It is now completely gone. He parks it up to the side of the road and um, thankfully it's in a, a good place so that there's no safety car or anything. So now we're up into top 10. We are up into the top 10. Um, I believe that's more because Lunga was already behind us. Sonoda's come in for his pit stop. He was on soft tires. So he's coming for his stop. He's now behind us. Um, don't think he's really going to be able to fight his way through. I think that's a bit of a pit stop blunder from Alpha Tauri and Sonoda there. We are in the top 10, but I don't think we're going to be really going for anything more here because Vettel up ahead is over six seconds. He's almost six and a half seconds up the road and we are actually losing time to him we can't quite catch Vettel we just don't have the pace so I think P10 is about as good as we can get here but it's good to at least get somewhat into the points as we watch on here a little bit of a, a little bit of a battle this is Sonoda trying to make his way back through the field he is on a second set of soft tires he I'm guessing went from mediums to two softs as he's trying to make his way past the Alfa Romeo of I believe that is George Russell or Kimi Raikkonen not too sure he a lot quicker than these guys on the soft tires but like I said it's very difficult to overtake on this Sandvot track as he is having a look but he puts too much power down and he spun out around that corner there and he thankfully keeps it out of the wall but that's Yuki Tsunoda he's now got to make all that time back up again and that completely throws his chances away at catching up to me and getting into the points. As we look at another battle here, we finally see some good overtaking from the AI. Honestly, there was no overtaking happening throughout this whole race, but I managed to find this battle towards the end. This is, I believe, Lewis Hamilton going for a move on Carlos Sainz. They're too wide from turn one all the way down through the long hairpin of turn three, I believe that is. And they're still side by side coming down this very long, squiggly sort of straight, but not straight. It's the very, very scary moment here. But look, they're having a colossal battle. It's an awesome little battle there. But Sainz just about um, lets Lewis go. And that brings Hamilton up into, I don't know what position, like P5, I think. Um, as this group here, with which is being led by Fernando Alonso. You can see Max Verstappen a fair way up the road there in the lead. But Fernando Alonso is still hanging on to second place. That second place he inherited right at the start of the race he's got Antonio Giovinazzi as the lead Mercedes behind him and then Sergio Perez in the other Red Bull in fourth place he's just coming through these few final corners here on the final lap it's looking very very good for Fernando Alonso and sure enough after a bad bad weekend for us Fernando Alonso is going to come through for P2 Verstappen crosses the line in P1 but it's Alonso's first podium for my team so it's really awesome that we have had a pretty bad weekend, but Alonso has managed to bring it back for a P2, his first podium for the team, that is definitely a good thing after, you know, having opportunities at podiums in the past, but not quite managing to get them due to either mistakes of his own or just bad luck. But we come home in P10, so it is one point for us at least. But um, yeah, not a great weekend for us but great to have Alonso on the podium. What a great race, then, and what a magnificent victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? 
I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. So Max Verstappen wins the Dutch Grand Prix. It's his first home win because in this career mode of ours, the real life 2021 season hasn't happened and Verstappen did not win the Dutch Grand Prix last season. So he wins his first Dutch Grand Prix here. Fernando Alonso gets his first podium with TGL Motorsport to come home in second. And Antonio Giovinazzi gets only his second podium in Formula One. Um, his first podium was in the first round of this season with Mercedes. But he hasn't been on the podium since, so um, yeah, good work from Giovinazzi here with Lewis Hamilton down in P5. And in the standings, we don't move anywhere. Um, Verstappen's now up into third. He is chasing down Perez and Hamilton. Alonso moves up to P11, so that puts him up the rankings a little bit there. But yeah, we don't move at all. And then there's no real changes down the bottom of the field. And then for the Constructors' Championship, we're now back up into P5. We're having that great little battle with Alpha Tauri. And now let's see if we can chase down. Ferrari. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.